Okay, let's talk defense mechanisms. So defense mechanisms is a category that you may see on either level of the exam. So we're going to talk about what a defense mechanism is and how do they manifest. And I'm going to do that by giving scenarios for each of our different defense mechanisms. I do want to preface this by saying I'm not going to go over every single defense mechanism. There's tons of them. I'm going to go over some of the main or most common ones seen. My tips for studying defense mechanisms is that it's going to be more than just memorizing the definitions of these. Remember, we're always looking to take our knowledge of the content to the next level because that's what is required in this test. Memorizing definitions is not going to be enough. So I'm going to give examples and even better if you can come up with your own examples for each one because as we know, taking real life examples and creating real life examples from content, it's going to help our retrieval on test day to memorize that information because we're using it and applying it to different scenarios. So I encourage you to come up with your own examples as we're going through these. What is a defense mechanism? A defense mechanism is something that we use to protect ourselves from unpleasant feelings, actions, and thoughts. Key thing here, that's why it's in bold, these are unconscious reactions that we might not even be aware of. And why do we use defense mechanisms? It's a way to protect ourselves and our ego from pain, hurt, painful memories, and it's really to protect ourselves from harm and vulnerability. Defense mechanisms were first proposed by Freud and then later developed by his daughter, Anna. Okay. We're going to jump on into compensation, making up for a real or perceived weakness. So if you perceive you have a weakness, you're going to do something to make up for that deficit. My example here is someone who has problems in their marriage may excel and go above and beyond at work. So maybe they're really bringing home a big paycheck and able to provide for their family because there's other ways that they're trying to compensate for those marriage problems. Studying is a defense mechanism that we actually use and that's compensation. Studying, right? We might have a perceived weakness in a certain area. Um, when we're studying math is not a, a strength of mine. So to compensate for that weakness, I would have to study even harder in that category. I'm making up for that weakness. I'm compensating for that area that I know I'm not as strong in. Okay. Conversion. Repression of an event or feeling is expressed in a bodily function or disruption in the body. When you see conversion, a memory trick is that you should automatically think of some physical symptoms. We know that our way sometimes of trying to repress certain feelings or memories, it will come out in certain ways in the body, right? That might be in headaches. That might be in chest pain. We know that there is a definite mind-body connection. So my example here is someone who is unprepared for a test, gets physically sick with nausea and headache the day of the test, right? Probably some subconscious anxiety, stress about not being ready to take this test. Conversion also can look um, like a variety of different things. It could be issues with feeling in the limbs. It can be problems with eyesight, fogginess, all because there's repressing of a certain feeling and it's having a physical symptom. Denial, blocking events from our awareness, denial of actions or feelings, and the inability to admit something has happened. So in denial, we are denying that this some sort of external stimuli has even occurred. We're blocking that out of our awareness. We can't even admit to ourselves that something happened. Very common thing is just to deny, right? Also very common amongst children and adolescents, right? Did you do this? No, it wasn't me, right? That's the first thing they say is that they're not going to admit that they were the ones to do it. Why that is, is because subconsciously we're trying to prevent some sort of negative feeling. My example here is a student is caught cheating on a test by the teacher. In denial, what would be the response? It was not me. I didn't do it. So denying cheating and is adamant he did not do it. Dissociation. 
Dissociation is when someone has almost like an out of body experience. They're having a momentary loss of connection to the world. You might even hear people say, I felt like I was not connected to my body. I, my, I know I was doing, I was committing acts, but I didn't feel like I was part of myself. Being separated from oneself or being separated from reality. Um, you might have an example I've seen where someone commits an act of aggression and an act of violence. And they're like, I was having an out of body experience. It's kind of this blind rage. They did not even remember doing it. My example here is someone who gets into an auto accident cannot remember driving or being involved the next day. It happened, right? But they had this kind of out of body experience, probably due to adrenaline or waste. You know, we need to protect ourselves from this traumatic event dissociated from self, dissociated from reality. Displacement versus projection. This is a, I put these two together because these are ones that people commonly get mixed up or have difficulty understanding the difference between the two. So I'm gonna go through them and give an example. Um, make sure you spend a little extra time on displacement versus projection because it can be tricky. Displacement, transfer of negative emotion from one person to an unrelated person or thing. I'm mad, so I'm going to take it out on someone else. I'm mad, so I'm going to take it out on an object, right? I, what this could mean is I'm mad, I'm gonna punch the wall. I'm transferring that negative emotion into the wall when I punch it. Example here, you've had a bad day at work and come home and yell at your wife and children, Obviously, they were not at work with you. They had nothing to do with it. You're displacing your anger with work onto family members, right? Often with displacement, we displace our negative feelings onto the people we love the most, right? Happens very, very frequently in any sort of relationship. Projection. When you project your thoughts and feelings onto someone else, I'm not displacing it onto them. I'm projecting my feelings and associating it to you. Example here. You have a drinking problem, but suggest that is really your wife who struggles with her drinking. So I don't have a drinking problem. It's you that has a drinking problem. I don't have trouble with finances. You must have trouble with finances. So it's your thoughts and feelings and you're um, giving them ownership to someone else. I'm feeling anxious. I'm feeling frustrated. You must be feeling anxious and frustrated, projecting thoughts and feelings onto someone else. Identification with aggressor. So this is when a victim takes the role of the aggressor and imitates their behavior. Why this happens, this defense mechanism, it's a way to protect oneself from harm, right? It's this very situational thing of if you can't beat them, join them, right? I need to protect myself, so I'm going to do the same behavior that you're doing to me victim taking on some of those behaviors of the negative behavior that's being done to them. Common example here, a child's being abused by their father comes to school and is physically aggressive to other students. Remember, if you see children acting out, in some cases, it might be what they see modeled for them at home. So maybe they're seeing aggression at home. They're identifying with the aggressor. Introjection, accepting another person's attitudes, beliefs, and values as their own, especially the ones that they find desirable. This is very common amongst adolescents, right? They want to be just like their friends. They want to fit in. So my example here is a teenager buys all name brand clothes because they perceive all the popular kids wear design clothes. I want to be a popular kid. I want to have their values and beliefs as my own. So I'm going to go out and buy all those brand name clothes. Another example is, a per, it's when someone's internalizing the ideas of someone else. So someone, a child might be crying and they might be trying to stop that crying and you might say, what's going on? And they might be saying, um, my family member said that I can't cry, it's weak. They have heard these attitudes, they've heard these beliefs, and they're now taking it on as their own. Isolation of affect. 
Screening out painful feelings by recalling a traumatic or painful event without experiencing the emotion associated with it. So this is going to be those people that really are able to separate their emotions or don't show outwardly many emotions. I'm sure everyone knows someone that's like this. They just cope with things in a different way. So their way of expressing is not by expressing, maybe they're not crying, maybe they're not showing sadness or anger. They might have flat affect. They're isolating the event from the affect that they're presenting. Separating thoughts from feelings while accepting reality. So this could be people that you know, they really are stone-faced despite having had something really traumatic happen to them. My example here is I should be upset that I wrecked my car on the way here, but I don't really care, right? Have you ever had a session where someone comes in and drops this really emotional bomb, but they just have flat effect. They don't seem to be showing any emotion related to it. Some people are really able to take out the emotion and it's so that they don't have to feel those feelings. It's subconsciously that they're isolating those feelings from the way that they are presenting. Rationalization is one that happens so, so, so frequently, right? Everyone has rationalized something at some point in their life. Rationalization is providing reasonable explanations to justify actions. So rationalization is something to protect myself from admitting or allowing something negative to happen to me. I'm going to find some sort of reason why this happened to me. Failures are a threat to the ego, so we pick certain elements of the truth and deny others. A lot of times, rationalization can look like making excuses, right? Um, I was going to go to the gym, but it was too cold outside, right? Um, reasonable explanation to justify my action, but at the end of the day, I did not go to the gym. My example here is I would have won the race, but the track was wet, and I didn't really try that hard. It's a way to kind of protect our ego from admitting that we didn't, we're not successful at something. So if you fail the test, oh, I didn't really try that hard on that test. Um, I didn't put much effort into it. Finding some justifiable explanation to protect ourselves from failure. Reaction formation. Expressing the opposite of your inner feelings in outward behavior. So I feel some sort of way, but on the outside, I'm acting the opposite. Behaving or reacting the opposite of your true intentions. So my example here, a woman expresses that she despises her sister and then buys her a best sister ever card. Internally despises her sister, has all these negative feelings about it. And then on the outside, doing the exact opposite, right? You are the best sister ever. I love you. So opposite of how they're feeling on the inside. Similarly, this happens a lot in the workplace, right? Internally, I hate going to work. I really don't want to be here. This is the worst at work. Happy smile. I love it here. I love my job. You're acting outwardly opposite of how you're feeling on the inside. Okay, regression. Reversion to an earlier state of development when faced with unacceptable, fearful, or threatening thoughts. So with regression, a person usually goes back to a developmental stage that they have mastered, and they go back to that developmental stage because it's safe and comforting. Um, this is, of course, done subconsciously. A lot of times we have regressions in things, right? Um, say a child was toilet trained something is stressful for them, traumatic for them, they regress and now they're starting to have accidents. An example of regression here is a college student who is stressed about upcoming finals be begins wetting the bed at night, right? College students have mastered toilet training, but maybe there's a lot of stress and this person is regressing to that earlier stage, wetting the bed. Repression. Repression is often confused with denial. Repression is unconscious forgetting of painful ideas, events, or conflicts. So you've repressed this so that when you go to talk about it, it's as if you don't even remember it, right? You've put this thought so far away out of your memory, it's as if you forgot it. Um, whereas denial, you're denying 
or not even admitting that something happened with repression. It's not that you're denying that something happened, but you're restraining the reaction to it. Repression is very common with people who are experiencing PTSD. And why do we repress thoughts? It's because it has been it's been helpful in stopping us from reliving that painful experience again. My example here is that an adult may not recall that their parent died in a car accident 10 years before because they pushed the incident away into their unconscious. That was probably a very painful and hurtful event for them. So then it's almost as if they forgot it. Not, un not consciously, right? Unconsciously, they are did that forgetting subconsciously because they were probably trying to restrain those negative feelings associated with it. So repression often seen in like very traumatic things in someone that has experienced a lot of trauma. Sublimation, redirecting or channeling strong emotions into an activity that is safe and production. So sublimation is actually a very positive defense mechanism. We have these strong emotions that might manifest in negative ways, but we're turning it into a safe, productive, and positive opposite. So most common example here, someone who has anger issues takes up boxing as a way to channel their aggression. Someone who has anxiety channels that into yoga, channels that into mindfulness. So taking those negative emotions and putting it into a safe, productive, and healthy um, activity. We encourage our clients to do this all the time, right? We're always encouraging them to explore activities that are going to be safe and productive as a way to kind of channel those energies. Undoing, taking back an unconscious behavior that is unacceptable or hurtful. So you might have done something and you realize that it was not acceptable or hurtful and now you want to take that back. After insulting someone, you spend the next hour praising them and showering with compliments. I want to un undo that action of insulting you. So what I'm going to do is now I'm going to praise you with compliments. I want to take that back. So you're trying to undo the negative thing that you did because you knew that it was unacceptable or you know it was hurtful. Um, undoing also is kind of like digging yourself out of the hole, right? Happens to everyone. You're trying to get out of it, so you're trying to undo that negative thing that you did. Here are a few additional resources for defense mechanisms. There's, there is a YouTube video that you can watch. And then if you really want to get deep into these, there's tons of defense mechanisms. But this website here is going to give you 31 different ones with explanations. Um, I definitely encourage you to refresh yourself on these defense mechanisms and test your knowledge with some practice questions. Okay, let's go through some practice questions. And remember with defense mechanisms, there's going to be some you know for sure are not right, so we will eliminate those. But these are going to be more of those application questions. So let's go ahead and jump in. Number one, a man has been having difficulties at work. When the wife inquires further about these problems, he gets upset and accuses her of having issues of, at work. The husband is most likely using the defense mechanism of... A, reaction formation, B, projection, C, conversion, or D, displacement. Which one do you think here? It's not reaction formation. We're not seeing um, an outward action that is different than our inside feelings. There's no physical symptoms. It's not conversion. We're down to those two ones. Are we projecting here or displacing here? Remember, displacement is usually I feel some sort of way and displace that anger onto someone else. That's not what's happening here. D is out. What is happening is projecting. I'm having difficulties at work, so I'm projecting this insecurity onto my wife. B is projection. Number two, Jessica was an aggressive child in elementary school who frequently got into trouble. In high school, she joined the track team and no longer displays aggression or gets into trouble at school. Jessica is most likely using the defense mechanism of reaction formation, sublimation, intellectualization, or displacement. Was getting into trouble, no longer having aggression since joining the track team. 
It's not displacement, no displacement of anger onto an object. Not finding out information about something and not the opposite of what we're feeling on the inside. Sublimation, remember, is when we take these um, negative thoughts, feelings, or impulses and put them to use for something positive, joining the track team. Number three, Eric is very dependent on his mom. She does many things for him, including washing and ironing his clothes and making him dinner. When asked about this by a friend, Eric becomes defensive and says his friend is a mama's boy. Eric is most likely using the defense mechanism of A, projection, B, denial, C, intellectualization, or D, displacement. He's not outwardly denying as if this does not happen. It's not denial not intellectualizing, not finding out more information about something. We're once again left with projection or displacement. His mom's doing a lot of things for him, ironing clothes, making him dinner. And then instead, he's asked about it by his friend, and he says, you're a mama's boy. He's projecting onto the friend. He's not displacing his anger. Okay, number four. What is an example of regression? A, someone who has experienced trauma begins to act out towards his family through aggression. B, someone who has been physically assaulted is not able to recount the attack in her therapy session. Someone who did not get the job they wanted begins crying and pouting and cannot be consoled. D, someone who was embezzling money claims he was set up and denies having been involved. We're looking for regression here. Keyword, regression is going back to an earlier developmental stage. A, acting out towards family through aggression. That would be displacement, displacing that anger. Someone who has been physically assaulted is not able to recount their attack. That's going to be repression. Someone who did not get the job they wanted begins crying and pouting and cannot be consoled. That's going back, regressing Two, an earlier developmental stage. Usually when people don't get a job, they're not pouting, tantruming, those type of things. Someone who was embezzling money claims he was set up, denies having been involved. That would be denial. Okay. Number five. A CEO of a major corporation was bullied as a child. He was frequently manipulated and made fun of by his peers. In the workplace, he laughs at his employees in meetings and pressures them into completing tasks for him. This is an example of what? A, displacement, B, identification with aggressor, C, reaction formation, or D, introjection. So we know that the CEO was bullied. And now what is this person doing? Laughing at employees and pressuring them to do things. We see some bullying behavior now. What is going on here? He's not displacing that anger. He's not acting the opposite of how he feels. Not taking on the beliefs of someone else as his own. But this is very common. Identification with aggressor with aggressor was bullied as a child and now is taking on those same behaviors and is bullying in the workplace. Defense. Anna's husband dies and she continues to set a place for him at the dinner table. This is an example of A, dissociation, denial, B, C, repression, or D, redirection. We know it's not redirection. That's not even a defense mechanism. It's not dissociation. We're not seeing any of that out-of-body stuff happening. So now we're down to denial or repression. These can look very similar. Denial is when you're denying some sort of external stimuli. Repression is not that you're denying what happens, but you have learned to restrain thinking about that or bringing up something because it's protecting you. So here, setting the place table, her husband's death, that's an external stimuli. It's going to be denial. Remember, with repression, you're not acting as if it never happened. You are trying to restrain it. And we don't have that 
information here. So we can go ahead and say denial is a better.